Lyudmila Mikhailovna Pavlichenko was born in Bila Servka, Ukraine, on July 12, 1919. She moved with her parents to the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, when she was 14. Her father, Mikhailo, was a St. Petersburg factory worker, and her mother, Olena, was a teacher. A tomboy at heart, she was fiercely competitive at athletics. She joined a DOSAF, or Volunteer Society for Cooperation with the Army, Aviation, and Navy Shooting Club, and grew into an amateur sharpshooter. It was here she earned a Voroshilov Sharpshooter Badge, an honorary badge for marksmanship in DOSAS, and her marksmanship certificate. At age 16, she married Dr. Konstantin Shevelyov and had a son, Rostislav, but the marriage was short-lived. She worked as a grinder for the Kiev Arsenal factory during the day and took night schooling. In 1937, she enrolled at Kiev University majoring in history to become a scholar and a teacher, and competed in the school's track team as a sprinter and a pole vaulter. Lyudmila also enrolled in a six-month Red Army sniping school to further her marksmanship. In June of 1941, while Lyudmila Pavlichenko was still enrolled at Kiev University in Ukraine, she wanted to join the military like many of her classmates. This was in order to try and stop the German invasion. When Lyudmila went to join, she looked more like a model due to her being a rather attractive person according to the Soviets. Because of this, the military recruiter laughed at her when she asked to carry a rifle and fight as opposed to being a nurse or participating in a smaller role. However, she persuaded him by proving that she could fight by completing, successfully, several training exercises. After this training, she was allowed to join the Red Army's 25th Rifle Division. In August of 1941, she attained her first two confirmed kills in combat by shooting and killing two German soldiers with a fallen ally's Mosin Nagant sniper rifle. She was defending a hill of strategic importance in eastern Russia. Most of the heavy combat Lyudmila witnessed and participated in took place east of Russia, which is Ukraine. Months later, after Lyudmila successfully defended the hill, she was engaged primarily in two locations, Odessa and especially Sevastopol. These two cities are located relatively near one another in Ukraine. In Odessa, where Lyudmila fought for over two months, she had attained over 180 confirmed kills. After the Germans seized Odessa and took control of it, Lyudmila was sent to Sevastopol, where she continued to fight. But by this point, she had become a highly respected individual by now having over 300 confirmed kills to her name. Unfortunately, in June of 1942, in the middle of a battle, she was struck in the head, specifically the face, with mortar shrapnel. Not wanting Lyudmila to sustain further injury or disdain, the Soviet High Command made the decision to withdraw Lyudmila from combat via submarine. At this time, Lyudmila was considered a national hero, and the high command did not want anything to happen to her, as she was a very valuable asset to the Soviet Union. Due to all of her actions here, Lyudmila was given the nickname Lady Death. Lyudmila Pavlichenko spent about a month in a hospital, and then became a propagandist for the Red Army. In 1942, she went to Canada and the United States to help convince the Allies to open a second front against Nazi Germany. She was the first Soviet citizen to be welcomed to the White House, as she was by Franklin D. Roosevelt. Pavlichenko toured the U.S. with First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, who related to her experiences as a female soldier. During the tour, Pavlichenko was not taken seriously by the press, who often called her Girl Sniper. One reporter even criticized her for wearing a longer skirt, and that her uniform made her look fat. They even asked if she wore makeup on the front lines. Pavlichenko appeared before the International Student Assembly held in Washington, D.C., attended meetings of the Congress of Industrial Organizations, and made speeches and appearances in New York City and Chicago. Everywhere she went, her speeches roused massive support. The mayor of New York, Fiorello H. Lagardia, gifted her a raccoon fur coat. The U.S. government gave her a cold semi-automatic pistol. And when she visited Toronto, Canada, she was presented with a Model 70 Winchester rifle with a Weaver telescopic sight. On the 21st of November, 1942, Pavlichenko visited Coventry, England, and received $4,516 in donations to help provide the Red Army with X-ray machines. As an officer, she never returned to the front line, and became an instructor training snipers until war's end. In 1943, she was awarded two Order of Lenins 
and the Gold Star of the Hero of the Soviet Union Award, two of the highest distinctions in the Soviet Union. After the war, Pavlichenko finished her studies at Kiev University and became a historian. She was a research assistant at the Soviet Navy headquarters from 1945 to 1953. Pavlichenko struggled with depression constantly from losing comrades in the war, PTSD, and alcoholism. She died of a stroke on October 10, 1974, when she was 58 years old. She was buried in Novodovichy Cemetery in Moscow, and her son Rostislav is buried next to her. In the late 40s, American folk singer Woody Guthrie composed the song Miss Pavlichenko in tribute to her wartime deeds and to memorialize her visits to Canada and the United States. She was the subject of the 2015 film Battle for Sevastopol, a heavily romanticized version of her life story with many fictional characters and events, and in 2018, an English language version of her memoirs titled Lady Death was published by Green Hill Books.